But in new hardware news, we have the information for the launch dates on the Intel Arc gra desktop graphics cards. And they are saying here on WCCF Tech that there should be a launch between August and September. Intel Arc's graphics cards have been the main discussion of this weekend in the rumor mill. And now we have more info coming in from Igor's lab. According to Igor Wallasek, who managed to obtain an updated ARC schedule, the lineup would see a gradual launch starting from the 5th of August till the 29th of September. This would be the third launch schedule that we have heard this weekend regarding Intel ARC's line of desktop graphics cards. The first came from Moore's Law is Dead in a rumor which was turned down by Intel CEO Pat G Gelsinger and VP of Graphics Raja Kaduri with both confirming that ARC is still very much on track for a Q3 2022 launch, and now we have Igor's lab confirming this as well. The launch is said to take place gradually, and we may even see each card become available in retail one by one rather than all being launched at once. If you look at Intel's marketing strategy, they are doing this already. The Intel Arc A380 launched first, and then Intel started talking about their high-end A750 limited edition graphics card, followed up by the Arc A770 limited edition. It is a pretty slick looking design. The company is also said to give select media the opportunity to review these cards ahead of launch, but whether these media only include tech YouTubers or written media outlets remains to be seen. The exclusive reviews will only uh, be based on Intel's own ARC reference designs, while AIB models will have no such restrictions. But the rest would also have to wait longer, considering that we already have seen one AIB limited to China release its card weeks after launch to DIY, and all reviewers who tested it had to purchase the product rather than Intel sending them one out by themselves for reviews so there's all of that in addition to this the primary reason why intel is not doing a massive global launch but rather relying on gradual rollout between august and se september still has to do with blue team's readiness in terms of drivers and support chipzilla wants to assure that arc is ready for users and only then will it ship the products globally now we've recovered of course the specifications on the intel chips uh, quite extensively in the past and not much has changed at the top end we are still getting a 256 bit bus with gddr6 clocked at 16 gigabits per second so a little slow unfortunately we're not getting the new gddr6 and depending on the price though this could still be you know enticing right if you see here we could get a 256 bit bus at 16 gigabits per second with 225 watt TDP at 349 to 399. And that's probably the most enticing one outside of the one right below it for mining, which would be the 225 watt at 299 to 349. So maybe a $300 GPU with a 256 bit bus could be pretty awesome for mining, of course, memory specific or memory heavy. Uh, algorithms such as ET hash and auto leakos and the likes. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Hopefully we see them get launched here in the next couple months and we get our hands on one for testing and we'll update you guys when we do. Now there is more information of course on the CPU side coming from Intel with their 13700K Raptor Lake CPU. And it's been overclocked to a whopping six gigahertz across all the cores. An alleged video showcasing the Intel i7-13700K Raptor Lake CPU has popped up, which shows an impressive six gigahertz overclock across all Raptor Cove cores. We just got the gaming benchmarks of the same chip a few hours ago, and now we can look at what sort of capabilities will be on offer when it comes to overclocking. The upcoming 13th gen Raptor Lake lineup is going to be optimiz an optimization of the 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, featuring Raptor Cove cores with enhanced cache structuring, faster clocks, and also an increase in the number of Grace Mount E cores. The CPUs have also been highlighted to offer some great overclocking capabilities, and it looks like we have the first overclocking figures coming 
to us from video cards and Twitter users. You can see here 5900 megahertz. The Intel i7 13700K CPU will be the fastest 13th gen core i7 chip on offer within the Raptor Lake CPU lineup. The chip features a total of 16 cores and 24 threads. This configuration is made possible with 8P cores, which stands for performance cores, based on the Raptor Cove architecture and 8E cores, which stands for efficiency cores, based on the Grace Mount core architecture. The CPU comes with 30 megabytes of L3 cache and 24 megabytes of L2 cache for a total combined of 54 megabytes of cache. This will give them obviously some improvement in some algorithms, by the way, for mining as well. Still not going to be on par with AMD and Ryzen for that particular setup, but you know, improvements nonetheless on the Intel side for the cache. The chip was running at a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost clock of 5.4 gigahertz. The all core boost is rated at 5.3 gigahertz for the performance course, while the E cores feature a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.3 gigahertz. So there are a total of three benchmarks of the alleged 13700K CPU. Uh, with overclocked frequencies. First and foremost, we have the chip running at 6 GHz on an MSI MEG Z690i Unify motherboard. This overclocking demonstration had just the 8 Raptor Cove P cores enabled and clocked at 6 GHz with a voltage supply of 1.42. That's pretty high on the voltage. Still really impressive regardless. The CPU temperature should be disregarded since the PC is in idle state, so we can't say what the maximum temps or power input was when running the CPU benchmark. But we do know that the chip scored 983 points in single core and 7,814 points in multi-core. And you can see this screenshot of the CPU Z right there. The second benchmark is with the whole 8 P core and 8 E cores enabled. We can see that the P cores are clocked at 5.8 gigahertz and the E cores are clocked at 3.7 gigahertz. The voltage was maintained much higher uh, at 1.5 volts, but it should be pointed out that the user wasn't running this under LN2 and a high-end liquid cooler was being used. With this overclock, the 13700K Raptor Lake 16 core chip scored 947 points in single core and 12,896 points in the multi-core test. That at six, like obviously at six gigahertz puts it in the lead over every current CPU out and of course their entire lineup. And on the multi-threaded, it, it comes very, very close to the 13900K at 5.8 gigahertz for the all-core. Pretty impressive stuff. What is really interesting here is that even with a lower 3.7 gigahertz clock speed, the E-cores are responsible for 40% of the performance. This is why we have seen such a big performance uplift in multi-threaded workloads for the leaked Raptor Lake CPUs. Lastly, we have a chip running at 5.9 gigahertz across all P cores, and here we can see actually that the power and temperature that the chip produced. With a voltage supply of 1.447 volts, the CPU was maxing out at 86 degrees Celsius with a power consumption of 238 watts. Now, as I was expecting the temperatures and power figures to be much higher, but we should remember that these are just the 8 P cores that are active. Enabling the E-Core should result in even higher power draw and temps on the chip. So the Intel 13th Gen or 13th Gen Raptor Lake desktop CPUs, including the flagship 13900K, is expected to launch in October on the Z790 platform. The CPUs will be going up against the Ryzen 7000 CPU lineup, which also launches in the fall of 2022. It's pretty exciting stuff. Cracking 6 gigahertz is amazing, especially if it really is only on, you know, a, li a custom liquid cooled or even like possibly like an AIO of sorts and not LN2, just a daily 6 gigahertz if you only have, of course, the performance cores enabled is what it sounds like in general. Otherwise, it sounds like it might get too hot uh, post, uh, you know, if you go over 6 gigahertz with the efficiency cores enabled. Either way, pretty cool to see it being cracked on the desktop lineup there. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my Locals 
page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.